The first aorist, when we think of it, first time is past tense. The stem is aorist. It has its own stem. It has a tense formative, which either could be sigma alpha or in rare cases that we're going to look at, only alpha. It does have an augment because it is a past tense. The voices are active. Remember, subject is the actor. And the middle, which is not like the imperfect. This is not a middle passive. This is a reflexive. Um, I did it for myself. Or it can be a deponent. The passive, we're going to look at later because it's a totally different form that's shared with the second aorist. The endings are secondary. Remember, the verb with an augment and secondary endings is always past tense. The aspect is undefined. Where the imperfect said, the water was falling, the first aorist merely says, the water fell. The writer is not painting a picture more than the fact that something happened. This is a principal part, and it's a third principal part. We've had present luo, future luso, and this is the third principal part, the aorist. In this case, it would be elusa. Let's look at the formation of the first aorist verb. We begin with an aorist stem. And remember, we're using luo, and luo is a wonderful verb because its stem never changes. It is a regular verb, so its aorist stem will look just like its present stem. Other verbs, however, have very different spellings for the, for the aorist than for the, the present. It has an augment usually an epsilon. We'll look at when it's not. It has a tense formative. Remember, the tense formative is usually sigma alpha. And then we put a secondary ending on it. It has an augment and secondary ending. This is a past tense. And the two to be together give us alusan. They loosed. Let's look at the structure of the first aorist, active indicative. We're just going to put down the stem because the stem is going to be the same all the way through. We're going to use lu. The augment, however, is dependent upon the first letter of the stem. In this case, it is a consonant. And since it's a consonant, the augment will be an epsilon. So we'll just put down an epsilon all the way down. This is a first aorist, so it does have a tense formative. And the tense formative is sigma alpha, except in the third person. And that tense formative is without the alpha. And so we only have a sigma. The endings are secondary endings. So in the, we expect new for the first person singular, but in this case, the new just falls off. We just have to remember that if we see a word that ends with the tense formative, it is first person singular. The second person is sigma, and the third person is epsilon. The nice thing is the endings in the plural in the first person plural and second person plural are the same as they are in the present. Men, te. And the third person plural, something that we recognize, is a new ending. Um, if we looked at standard um, secondary endings, you'd remember that both the first person and the third person plural have new as an, as an ending. However, in the case of the first aorist, that new falls off in the first singular. So, to get, putting these together, we get alusa, I loosed. Alusas, that sigma tells us second person, you loosed. 
Alosen, alose or alosen, that's a movable new. Remember, the movable new occurs if, if the word comes before a vowel or if it comes at the end of a sentence. He, she, it, loosed. Lusmen, and lusmen, we loosed. And lusate, you all loosed. And then elusan, they loosed. The liquid first aorist. The final vowel of the stem is a liquid consonant. We call that a limner because I just put vowels between the consonants lambda, mu, nu, rho, so that you could remember. If you remember the word limner, you'll remember all the consonants that are liquid consonants. Liquid consonant does not like to be followed by a sigma. And the sigma is lost from the tense formative sigma alpha, and only the alpha remains. For example, emena, I remained, rather than the expected emensa. The sigma falls out because it follows a liquid. Also occurs in middle endings. Amena main. I remained for myself, rather than the expected a main sa main. The sigma again falls out because it follows a new, which is a limner. Let's parse the first aorist active indicative. The word is alusas, and its lexical form is luo. The sigma at the end immediately should tell us that this is a second person singular. The sigma alpha tells us that the tense is first aorist, and the ending is active, so the voice is active, and of course the mood is indicative. The meaning is you singular loosed. Amenate. This is from meno, and we know that something's going to happen because we have, we have a liquid consonant, nu, and something's going to happen with the ending. So that te at the end is the sign of a second person plural. That alpha, we expect a sigma alpha here, but the alpha is there because the Sigma fell out because it follows a liquid. So we get nate instead of natsate. The tense is first aorist. The voice is active. The mood is indicative. And the meaning is you, plural, remained. Egrapse. No ending. We have this epsilon. The person is third person singular. It is from grapho, the lexical form. This psi, anytime you see a psi, assume that a sigma has been added to it. So we have a sigma here, which is the sign of the first aorist. The voice is active, mood indicative, and the meaning is he, she, it, wrote. Let's look at the first aorist deponent indicative. In this case, we're going to use dechomai. So, the stem is going to be dech all the way down. And because Dechomai begins with a consonant. The augment is an epsilon. So we'll just do that all the way down. The tense formative is sigma alpha all the way down. In the deponent, it's going to be sigma alpha all the way down. The ending is standard middle endings main, u, and 
this would have been an, an ooh, but the alpha from the ending is going to merge with it. And an alpha plus an omicron upsilon equals an omega. So the ending here is actually omega. So we have main O ta. And the nice thing is the secondary primary endings are the same as the singular in the first and second plural. So we have meta, sta, and enta. So the words that we get are edexamen, and that sigma has merged with a he to pursue, to uh, create the kasi. So we have edexamen, I receive, edexo, you received, edexata, he, she, it received, edexametha, we received, edexaste, you all received, and edexanta, they received. So let's parse the first error's middle or deponent indicative. The word is alusamein, and the lexical form is luo, that lu there doesn't change. The person, main, me, is first person singular. The tense, because of that sigma alpha, is first aorist. The voice is, because luo is a, is an omega verb in its active form, then this has to be a middle, a true middle. So we get middle indicative, and the meaning is I loosed for myself. Remember, the middle can often be a reflexive. A dexanta, that enta. So we began with dechomai, and you'll see the lexical form is has my at the end, so we know it's a deponent. And anta, the ending, is third. All the ta's are third, but the enta is third plural. Once again, the tense is sigma alpha, and it's merged with a he to be a kasi, so we get kasi alpha here. It is a deponent because in its active form, that is the form that you got in your vocabulary, it has a middle ending. Its mood is indicative. They received. Eluso from Luo. And that O at the end we talked about a little bit earlier, is emerging, and it looks at first as if this could be a first-person singular, but this is a middle ending. So the middle ending is second-person singular, first aorist, that's sigma there, active, indicative, you loosed. Square of stops. Because the tense formative for the first aorist starts with a sigma, stems ending with stops will merge in predictable ways. This follows the rules of the future. Blepo, I see. The sigma merges with the P and becomes a PC, and we get eblepsa. In dioko, the kappa will merge with a sigma and will become a kasi, 
and we will get a dioxa. I followed. In patho, with the theta, I persuade. The, the theta is going to merge or drop off or any way you want to think about it. But what we're left with is only a sigma. So we'll get epesa, I persuaded. First aorist contract verbs. First aorist contract verbs are formed if the stem of the verb ends in a vowel. Because of the tense formative sigma alpha, final stem vowels expand in one of two ways. Alpha and epsilon will expand to an eta, and omicron will expand to an omega. So, agapao, because the vowel is an alpha, is going to expand to an eta. So, we get agapesa, eta. Poyeo, because the vowel is an epsilon, it's also going to expand to an eta. And we'll get epoyesa. You'll excuse the, the accents. I'm trying to, uh, to accentuate the changed vowel rather than the accent of the verb. You'll see the accent of the verb correctly um, is on the screen. Omicron expands to omega. So, plerao, the omicron, will expand to eplerosa. Eplerosa. Sentences with pistuo. The present is ego pistuo to curio hemon. That is, I am trusting, continuous, in our Lord. The future is ego pistuo to curio hemon. And you'll see that Sigma is the tense formative of the future. I will trust in our Lord. The imperfect ego epistuon to curio hemon, and remember it is continuous using the present stem. I was trusting in our Lord. And the first heiress with its tense formative sigma alpha, ego epistusa to curiochemon, is I trusted in our Lord. Compared to the imperfect, which was a continuous past tense, this is an undefined past tense. I trusted. Let's do our vocabulary. Aperchomai, aperchomai, I depart, or I go from. Archo, archo, and archo has two meanings. This is one in which the middle actually has a different meaning than the active. The active, archo, means to rule. Archomai, the middle, means I begin. Grafo, grafo, I write. Dio, dio, therefore, for this reason. Daxazo, daxazo, I praise, honor, glorify. Dunamis, dunamis. Power or miracle. Dunamis is the root for dynamite. Keruso, Keruso, I proclaim or preach. Pino, Pino, I drink. <laughs>